احمد سوري ادم جويت يس اوكي رشوان رشوان از نوت هير رايت حسن يوسف نوت هير مؤمن العزبي نوت هير نور مهدي اسامة الجيزي يوسف هير فادية هير فرح البغدادي هير هير فاطمة فاطمة حبيبة العزبي حالة طارق هير هنا مجدي هير هنا حمدي هير هنا درغام هير هنا الحلو هنا الحلو هير هير اوكي ايسر رفاعي جنى هير جودي هير هنزي هير خديجة هير لجينا أيمن هير لجينا عباس لجينا عباس ملك إسلام she's connected uh, she's connecting to the audio she's trying to connect okay ملك إسلام مايا هير نور الماحي هير اندريم هير alright let's start our lesson today we're going to be covering the last part of uh, South Asia but I'll start with a revision then I'll cover the last part that we have please be active let's start by the definition of a subcontinent what's meant by a subcontinent All right, let me start by uh, Lujaina. Go ahead, Lujaina. Uh, it's a large land mass that is part of a continent. Okay. Thank you very much. That's what's You're meant welcome. by uh, a subcontinent. And we consider South Asia a continent or a subcontinent, yeah, Lujaina? Uh, miss what? I can't hear you. We consider uh, South Asia a continent or a subcontinent? A uh, subcontinent. A subcontinent. Thank you very much. How many countries are there in uh, South Asia and how many islands? And mention the names. Nur al uh, Seven countries make up the region of South Asia. India mm -hmm. is the largest. The other six countries are Pakistan, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, and two um, islands, Maldives and Sri Lanka. Thank you very much, Yanur. Let's move to the northern mountains and plains. We have actually three uh, mountain ranges and we have uh, three bodies of water. Let's talk about uh, the three mountain ranges at the beginning. Hana Hamdi, what are the three mountain ranges? The Hindu Kush, uh, the Karakoram, and the Himalaya. And uh, the uh, Mount Everest in the Himalaya is the largest in the world. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Let's move to the... Um, before I move to the bodies of water, I want to say that uh, these mountains are forming physical barriers. Who can explain? Judy? Uh, invader, invaders and traders could uh, enter South Asia through a few openings, uh, such as the Khyber Pass between um, Afghanistan and Pakistan. 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 So the, these mountains are forming actually in a, a physical and natural barriers because they, uh, they are keeping them away from in, invaders and also at the same time traders, uh, except for a very small opening, which is the Khyber Pass between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Um, also, we said that these mountains are formed because of Reem Gouda. Uh, tectonic plates. Tectonic plates and they were created by tectonic plates, so they form a physical barrier. 
and also earthquakes, because we know that tectonic plates will result in volcanoes or earthquakes. Thank you, Arim. Let's move back to the major bodies of water or the major uh, rivers there. Who can elaborate about them? Let's see, uh, Adam Guayet. Tell me about the. There are three: the Indus, huh? the Indus, and the Ganges, and the Brahmaputra. The Brahmaputra. Brahmaputra. Thank you, Adam. Yes, we have actually three main rivers. They are the Indus, the Ganges, and the Brahmaputra. Uh, also, we said that uh, the Indus flow where, and where do the Indus flow, and where does uh, do the uh, Brahmaputra and the Ganges flow? Uh, Ali Shem. Uh, the Indus flows uh, southward uh, through Pakistan to the Arabian Sea. And, and um, the Ganges and uh, Bahamatra flow east and southeast to the um, Bay of Bengal. Thank you, Ali. Okay, these actually three rivers cross Rivas Plains and where they are natural flooding. And because of the natural flooding, we have two um, natural features there. Maya, can you mention them? The alluvial plain and the delta. Yes, can you elaborate about them? Uh, the alluvial plain is created by the uh, by the Ganges River, and the delta um, uh, deltas are places where river deposits soil at the mouth of the river. Yes. Oh. Okay. Oh, they are rich farmlands. And they are they have actually rich farmlands. Yes, thank you. Let's move back to the, the geography of the center and the southern highlands. We said that we have also their mountains and rivers, which dominate the central and the southern part of them. Uh, also, they are separating them from other countries. Who can tell me about them? Youssef? Youssef? We sort of the question again. The, the, the geography of the central and the southern highlands. We have uh, plenty of mountains and rivers. I want you to elaborate about them. What's the most important physical feature there? Uh, much of th uh, th southern India is a flat, uh, is a high flat arc uh, area called the uh, Deccan uh, yes. Plateau. Yes. So we have uh, the Deccan Plateau and uh, western and eastern uh, just like G H A T S. Guts. Guts. Yes, thank you. Uh, form yeah. the plateau's edges. Mm -hmm. And this area, is it dry or does it have fertile soil for farming? Uh, the soil of the plain are rich and fertile. Thank you, Yusuf. So we have there the Deccan Plateau, and we have two low mountain ranges, which are the Western and Eastern Ghats. And this area is uh, or have a south plain of rich and fertile soil. Let's talk about the islands of South Asia. Uh, who can tell me about the islands? And okay, Kinsey Tahan. There are two, Sri Lanka and Maldives. Sri Lanka that are located in southeast of India, and Maldives in southwest, in west of India. Tips. Thank you, Kinsey. Then we have covered uh, the South Asia's climate. And we have mentioned two important uh, features there in the climate. Who can tell me about South Asia's climate and the most the important features? Judy, Judy Abouf. Uh, the climate is uh, closely related to the physical features of the region. Um, we have two okay, features. Uh, huh? The monsoons and the... Oh, on that count? The monsoon and the cyclone. Monsoon and the class. I can't tell. Cyclone. Cyclone. Okay. I, do I say that? Yes, define the monsoon okay. and the cyclone because I want you to compare between them. Okay. Uh, the monsoon uh, the re uh, has little or no rain for eight months of the year. And then the beginning of um, early May and early June, temperatures began to rise sharply. And uh, this, is that yes? Cyclones. What's it called? The cyclones um, are large swirling storms 
often slam into the coast along the Bay of Benga. Uh, their violent uh, winds and heavy rain can cause uh, devastation. Dev devastation. So they are causing like problems or devastation or uh, like collapsing for everything. So these are the, uh, actually the most important features of the climate there. We have the monsoon, which most of the region has little or no rain uh, of eight months of the year. Then at the beginning of May and early June, the temperatures began to rise sharply. And then you find a little bit uh, rains, uh, heavy rain and the flooding. And we have the cyclone. Cyclone are swirling storms uh, often slam into the coast along the Bay of Bengal, uh, which causes strong wind to push water from the Bay of Bengal to the shore, also causing flooding. What about the tropical and the dry area and dry areas? Tropical and dry areas. Who can describe the weather there? Hannah uh, Durgham. Hannah Durgham. The tropical climate? Yes, tropical and dry areas. Uh, uh, had three seasons, wet and, and hot and wet and cool. The hot and, and cool season are dry, and the three seasons are the result of monsoon wind patterns. And the tropical uh, wet climate are found along the western coast of the India. Southern Sri Lanka and the Gang uh, Delta in Bangladesh. And this area uh, get uh, plenty of rain year round and have thick green uh, vegetation. Okay, Hannah, thank you. About the Northwest uh, South Asia, it has the region's driest climate. So this area will get relatively little rain annual rainfall. So that's why it is dry. So why do we call Northeastern South Asia the region's driest climate? Why do we call it this? Reem Gouda? Um, because the, the, the seasons are dry, so not wet climate. Uh, it has little or no rain or a, an annual rainfall. Thank you, Reem. Then uh, let's move to the next part, which is the... Um, other climate, uh, which is the highland and the tem uh, temperate climate. The highland and the temperate climate. Usama Gizi, you just joined us. Can you tell us about the temperate climate? Miss, I think he um, is doing the, 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 the mute. Sorry. He's mute already. As I'm asking, Yanni, Usama, you're here? Usama? Yes, he left. He just left? Okay. Uh, who can elaborate, Fadia, about the temperate climate there? Highland and temperate climate. Fadia? Um, sorry. Miss, can you repeat the question, please? The high highland and temperate climates. Well, okay. How does the, the highlands uh, any affect the climate? Uh, the tops of the, the huge mountain ranges on the uh, south Asia's northern border are covered year-round in snow. The mountains affect the climate. Uh, in winter, the Himalaya block the uh, uh, block the cold uh, winds sweeping down from the central Asia. Uh, this forms a large temperate, uh, temperate, temperate, temperate zone that stretches across Nepal, Bhutan, uh, northern Bangladesh, and northern India. Far, uh, farther uh, south, the elevation of the Deccan Plateau combined with the wind blocking effect of the western and eastern Ghats created another temperate climate area. So, Fadia, you just mentioned that we have two areas. Thank you, Fadia. We have the mountain ranges, which are the Himalayas, because they are very high because of their elevation. So they, they cover the, the snow. snow. Yes, thank you for this part. Then you mentioned that the Deccan Plateau combined with the wind blocking also affects and creates another uh, temperate. And, uh, 
Yes, thank you, Fadia, very much. Who can tell me what are the positives and the negative effects of monsoons? Who can tell me what are the negative and the positive effects of monsoons? Maya, do you know your Maya? Yes. Maya, go ahead and tell me. Uh, the monsoon provided, uh, provides them with uh, farmlands uh, and rich farmlands uh, for the population, but it also destroys home and uh, ends life. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Actually, monsoons have both negative and uh, uh, positive effects at the same time because they are providing us with fertile soil, but at the same time, it could end lives or destroy buildings and so on. Let's move to the natural resources, a part of the natural resources. We said that they are not evenly dist uh, distributed and uh, the largest country, India has the most productive uh, land as well as the mineral resource. Who can tell us about the water resources? How, uh, what, how do agents depend on for irrigation and for water? Let me see. Lujain uh, Norman. Uh, okay. Uh, South Asian depend on rivers for uh, irrigation mm -hmm. and uh, drinking and household water uh, and transportation. Yes. Uh, and uh, water in rivers is also considered scared in uh, Hinduism. 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 The principal uh, region in India, Hind uh, Hindus, prefer the gangs named for uh, goddess Ganga. Ganga, yes. They have a goddess called K Ganga, and they have called the river with her name. So this is the importance of water for the South Asian. They depend on it for irrigation, drinking water, household water, and transportation. At the same time, it is considered very scared, especially in Hinduism. They are calling the gangs uh, on the name of their goddess. Today, also, water is a very important source of energy. Who can tell me how? Water now is a very important source of energy. Hala, Hala Tore. Hala is here. Okay, Nur al Mahi. Let me check if Hala. Mountains provide swift flowing rivers that can be used to generate electricity. Several yes. dams, such as the Narmada River project, project, are being built. Yes. And hundreds are being, are being plan, planned. Thank you very much. So, uh, as, uh, as the Noor mentioned, they are um, considered one way in order to produce electricity. And there are several projects that are done there in order to provide uh, water uh, all over the year, not just in seasonal water. And also uh, the flood, uh, to control the floodings, to control the floodings. Uh, although yani, building dams is very important in order to control floodings, but people are not yani, with the building of the dams. Why? You can tell me why do, uh, people do not encourage the building of dams. Hana Hamzi? Miss, can you repeat the question? Again, although dams are very important in order to provide uh, uh, water needs for uh, the basic water needs for people, but people there are not with building many dams or these projects. Why? Do you know why? Uh, because uh, because uh, uh, people point up, out that areas must be flooded to build dams, and uh, this will displace uh, billions of people and destroy ecosystems. Yes, so if, uh, if we're going to like build um, dams, we need to displace millions of people and destroy, destroy the ecosystem. That's why they don't, uh, they, they are using the traditional ways to manage their water needs. Let's talk about the mineral and the energy resources. Uh, who can tell me what's in India, what's in Nepal, what's in Sri Lanka, and so on? Let me uh, start with. Hannibal Magd, you're here? Yes. Hannah, tell me about the mineral resource. For example, India. Um, um, hmm? Manganese and uh, chromite. Oh, chromite. 
Again, continue. Huh? Manganese and chromite. Only? Manganese and chromite only? Hmm. Let's see. Hannah and Helm. Hannah and Helm. Guys, if you don't answer, I consider you absent. So please hurry up, huh? Hannah and Helm, you're here? Okay, Usama Gizi. So I can hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Uh, India has most of South Asia's mineral resources. Nepal and Sri Lanka also have mineral resources. Iron ore, manganese, and chromite are used to make uh, steel. Mm -hmm. Mica, uh, Zarok used to manufacture electrical equipment. That, uh, thank, you, yeah. thank you, Usama. Thank you. Uh, Rashwan, I want to know more about Nepal's natural resources. Ahmad Rashwan. Ahmad Rashwan. Ahmad, unmute. Oh, sorry, Miss. It's okay. Ha, tell me about Nepal's natural resources. They have iron ore. Uh, copper, cobalt, uh, pirate, mm -hmm. and uh, pirate are used for making uh, sulfuric acid, and you have limestone and uh, mica. Okay, thank yes. you. Uh, what about Sri Lanka? Who can tell me about Sri Lanka? Hana Durgaim? Sri Lanka boasts uh, some of the world's finest game, game stones and ink. Game stones? Mm -hmm. The Faris, Ruby. And Sri Lanka has also has a large quantities of, of graphite. And this is the lead that is used in pencils. And graphite is also used in batteries and as the as a lubricant. Lubricant. Yes. So please repeat it again back from your own mind with reading. Sri Lanka okay. has uh -huh. Sri Lanka has the most finest uh, game stone and uh, has and has the largest quantities of uh, of graphite and the lead is used in pencil. Thank you. Thank and you very much. Used in uh, batteries. Batteries, yes. South Asia also has important petroleum reservers. Who can tell me about the petroleum reservers? Hannah Durgham, you finished? Okay. Yes. I know, I know. Uh, Reem Gouda? Got, miss, can you let Fufi enter? Okay. Um, there are important uh, petroleum reserves in northern Pakistan and in Gangs Delta. Uh, overall, um, South Asia runs on important oil. The important oil, mm. uh, such as the natural gas fields in southern Pakistan and Bangladesh. Yes, thank you. And also they use, um, India use uranium. Yes, thank you. So they are mostly using uh, uranium, uh, petroleum, uh, natural gas. They have the domestic oil production. Uh, so the, depending on, especially in Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, these are having the most important uh, deposits of uranium, especially in the northeastern of Ghats. Today we're talking about the forests and wildlife. This is the last part of the lesson. Who can tell me what kind of forest is Wildlife, who can elaborate about this part? Is it valuable? What are the things we can find there? Can you repeat the question, please, again? Again, today we're covering the forests and the wildlife. So what are the most important, um, who can elaborate about the wildlife? What's the most important animals there, plants, how the, the forest is there, and so on? Okay, Nur al Mahi. Can you repeat the question? Again, we, today we're talking about the forests and the wildlife. Explain. Nice. Like rivers, forests have greatly influenced the history. In colonial times, the British ruled much of the subcontinents. Forests were admired for their beauty, but exploited for their commercial value. 
um, important timber resources then included teak, sal, and sandalwood. The woods are still available. There is much debate about how they should be used or whether they should be conserved. That's it. So, uh, as you mentioned again, uh, according to the history of South Asia, even in the colonial times, the British ruled most of the subcontinent. So forests were admired for their beauty. So forests there are very admired for their beauty. And I guess also they are valuable. So what are the valuable resources there? We have the timber, we have the teak and the sal, and the, sand, uh, the sandalwood. Sandalwood, I guess it's used for perfumes and so on. So these are still valuable till today. And if you're asking about the temper, the tea and the sal and the sandalwood, you'll find it very valuable and very rich. But now there is a debate how we should use it and how it should be conserved. Because as you know, Indian peoples do not have many resources. So they don't know or they, or they are not able to pro uh, 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 protect their resources. Let's talk about the forests and what's the importance of forests and why it is important. Maya, can you tell me why forests are important? Uh, they provide, uh, not only they provide wood products, they're also uh, habitats yes. for many animals. And uh, also they take the most important gas or the greenhouse gas. Uh, what is it? Yes. Right. Carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide. So forests are important because they are source of wood. They are taking uh, the green gas, which is the carbon dioxide, and also they release oxygen. Also, they are considered a habitat for uh, many animals. And the soil is uh, important, or the trees uh, actually, is important to uh, reduce the erosion of the land. What about the animals in the area? Who can tell me the most important animals are the extinct or, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, uh, the Indian moments, mm -hmm. uh, the, ti the tiger, the Asian elephants, and the one horned uh, rhino. rhino. What is, uh, are these extinct animals or? They're wild animals. Yes, why well, they are endangered actually mammals. So India is the home of these mammals, the tiger, the Asian elephants, and the one warrant rhinosaurus. These are endangered animals. That's why South Asians now are working to protect them. How? How are South Asians are working now, Fadia? Uh, are working to reverse some of the region's wildlife losses. Uh, where the creation of wildlife reserves and laws uh, controlling hunting and logging have started to make a difference. Yes, thank you very much, Efezia. So they're now trying to con uh, conserve uh, the wildlife and the creation of the wildlife reserves and laws which are controlling the hunting and the logging have started to make a difference. So uh, again, let's revise the part of the uh, forest and the wildlife. From the beginning, we said that um, uh, uh, rivers and forests have great influence, which has uh, formed um, a very valuable forest is there. They are home for many important or valuable resources such as timber, uh, teak, sal, and sandalwood. Also, we have different kinds of uh, attractive forests, which are used to uh, con uh, what construction. And at the same time, they are bringing the uh, taking actually the greenhouse gas, the carbon dioxide, and releasing oxygen. Then uh, also we have uh, it is the, the forest are the home for the endangered most important animals, which are the tiger, the Asian elephants, and the one-horned rhinoceros. But now South Asians are working to reserve the region's wildlife by creating wildlife reserves and low controlling hunting and logging. That's it for the lesson. Uh, before the, uh, the session ends, let me just tell you something. Uh, your homework is already uploaded to the assignment button. So you're going to check the assignments, okay? Your homework had a deadline, has a deadline, which is Saturday, 9 uh, p.m. Uh, you will finish the homework and send it also through the assignment button. Then I will start receiving recording on your homework Then I will send you an email on Sunday to confirm you that I have received your homework. 
okay? For those who hasn't sent the homework, an email will, an, another email will be sent to their parents that they haven't sent their homework. So please check, do not check my library anymore. Check the assignments button. The assignments button, you'll find your homework. It's already uploaded now. Okay? Okay, thank you. See you on Sunday, inshallah. Thank you, Ms. Sarah. Thank you, Ms. Sarah.